What is good everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a great day and if you're new to the channel and want to hit that subscribe button that would be awesome. Just got back from the post office. Just shipped out my old vacuum pinion so I can get my core deposit. Um, also went to the parts store and ordered some new sway bar end links. As you saw in the rack and pinion video which did very well and thank you everybody for your support on that and I'm glad I was able that Brian and I were able to help you out and give you the confidence to do so. My front sway bar end links were shot so I got those coming hopefully Friday and then today the main part of this video we finally got our outer tie rods because my OEM tie rods the ball joint is loose and the boot is just disintegrating. So over here, ordered from Moog's website directly, we got the end links. I don't know what that is. Or end links, we got the outer tie rods. I was freaking out a bit because the boxes were two different sizes. But here we go, got our Moog outer tie rods. I heard nothing but good things about these and the quality feels really good. And also look at that, what do you want to call that, a ball joint? And the boot is just perfect and brand new. So here we have the, you say driver side, and then this guy here is going to be the passenger side. So what we are going to do is, of course, take off this locking nut, disassemble the outer tie rod from the knuckle here. We're gonna count the resolutions outward, which I believe it was 14. We'll do that for the passenger side too. And then when we install our new outer tie rods, we'll do the same thing. We'll just throw the locking nut probably in the middle of the inner tie rod thread here, and then we'll screw in resolutions 14. And I know for this side, we just had to screw this outer tie rod in, I believe 13 resolutions. So as you saw, that was very self-explanatory. And kidding guys, this is just a, just a cap. So we screwed in the new outer tie rod, 14 resolutions. This bottom bolt here is gonna be a 19 millimeter. Just have to hit this locking nut, make it tight. But before I do all that and finalize the side, I'm gonna put the wheel back on and see where she sits. Even though it's not gonna be at right height, as long as the wheel looks a little bit, I guess, flat, straight, then our job here is done, and then the alignment shop will do their best to finalize. So this is the steering wheel straight. It's a little bit towing in, so we'll just go ahead and adjust another resolution inward to set this driver's side at 15. And that should correct it for the meantime. The alignment shop will adjust, I believe, the inner tie rod to get a more accurate I'm just gonna go ahead and install both of them and then do my final eye adjustments. So let's go ahead and knock this out, put the wheels on and see where they sit. New outer tie rod is installed. Wheels are both on, as you can see. Steering wheel straight, sorry about the darkness. Wheel is straight, we are towing outward about one degree or so. So we'll, um, we'll push out one resolution, that should get it near straight and then on our driver's side it's actually pretty good swing wheel is straight it's about straight it's slightly towed in so we'll just go ahead and adjust the passenger side real quick see where she sits wheel is adjusted one resolution outward Looks a lot better, looks more straight. This driver's side, I think I just have to go like half a turn inward, but I can't half a turn with the outer tie rod, so I'm gonna have to adjust it from the inner. But again, going to let the alignment shop adjust all the toe and the caster. I wanna say a successful install. 
let's go ahead and tighten all the locking nuts up, tighten up the wheels, and get the prelude back on the ground. Wheels are on. After tightening all the bolts and the outer tie rod, pushing them into the knuckle, the alignment looks a lot better. Start the car, put some air through these bags, and see where she sits after that. Because at my right height, I'm sure I'm gonna have to do a lot of adjustment. The prelude has landed. Cool. Wheels look straight, right? Wheels are looking good. But when you check out the steering wheel. <laughs> Sick. But again, I can't emphasize this enough. The alignment chop will fix the rest. All right. Prelude is all nice and aired out. Got that nice quarter panel two lip fitment my front wheels actually fit a lot better just because they are slightly towed out which correct me if i'm wrong i think a little bit toe out is okay but then again i'd rather be zero toe because toe is what really kills your tires passenger side is looking good and of course we are just trying to get as much negative camber from the rear as possible so it is um too late to call the shop i go to for alignments they are unfortunately closed so I will give them a call tomorrow morning-ish afternoon when they open, schedule an appointment for an alignment on Friday. Most likely take the prelude to work with me and the camera and we'll just head down to the shop after work because it's like a 10 minute drive for me, which I'm super stoked. I can't wait to start driving the prelude again and not worry about my rack and pinion. But honestly, that's all I have left for this part of the vlog. We'll continue when I do my alignment. And also real quick, shout out to Alex for Ping up these neon pink grips for the drift trike. I do plan on modding this baby sometime next year. I'm just gonna paint the frame white, get new wheels, probably new seat, upgrade the brakes and the tire and all that good stuff. So expect that to come. I also need to ship out some orders. I have a couple orders, but I ran out of envelopes. So I gotta do that. So I'm sorry guys, but if you do wanna cop any flight tags, and or die cuts link in the description below to the big cartel account but until then guys i will see you probably cruising to the alignment shop what's good everybody it's the next day just got home from work and damn was it slow but on my lunch break called the alignment shop we have an appointment in about an hour so we're gonna head out here pretty soon i just topped off all the fluids checked the oil the radiator all the good stuff so she should be good to go I don't know why I'm always nervous when I take the Prelude on long drives. I'm just more like worried and anxious about other drivers, but we should be good. Um, so I'm going, there's a bunch of alignment shops near me. Like there's, a, there's like probably five or six, about 15 minutes from me, but I'm going to the alignment shop that I got the Integra and the Prelude aligned at last time, which is about 40 minutes away. The reason why I'm going there is because I trust my, I trust my car and their mechanics there and i rather drop the extra distance to make sure and to know that the job is getting done but i'm not going to vlog while i'm driving because safety first so i will see you guys at the alignment shop all right made it to the alignment shop honestly the drive wasn't that bad but every bump i hit just knocked me either left or right so that alignment is hella off when i kept the steering wheel i guess vertical which is supposed to be straight it didn't lean left or right so that could that's a good sign the alignment rack is open right now, so let's hopefully knock this out as soon as possible. Family, we are finally home. Holy crap. There's about a 45 minute drive there. About 45 minutes to get the car aligned. We'll go in deeper with the paperwork. And about an hour and five minutes home, I just barely, barely, barely missed rush hour. But a lot of people are giving me thumbs up. Good looks and some people are giving me dirty looks, but that's just the life of a hot boy stance car. But again, Prelude is driving great with the alignment. Um, still pulls to the right a little bit, but I know Preludes are notorious for that. And since I don't have adjustable ball joints up front for my camber, I believe my driver's side is running like three, negative three degrees. And then my passenger side is running like negative 2.7 degrees. So it does sag a little bit to the right, but nothing like it used to. Toe is good, car drives straight, car rides awesome, but I actually forgot how uncomfortable the Prelude can be, because as you all know, I have these Hot Boy wheels with this 
dumbass stretch and I keep my tires up front at 50 PSI and then in the rears I keep my tire pressure at 65 PSI so it's not the most comfortable and also thinking about getting sway bars I don't know if I mentioned that in this vlog yet I forgot but definitely going to be getting sway bars this upcoming paycheck and then probably towards the end of this year or beginning of next year I'm going to convert my rear air strut to air techs slim bellow because I'm just running air lift, air sleeve. I mean, it gets the job done, but it's just not the most comfortable and it's still a little bit spongy. But if I have a full set of slim bellows from AirTech, the Prelude should ride immaculately, especially with the sway bars. Oh, super stoked about that. But let's go ahead and get into the alignment paperwork. So before the adjustment, and again, if you're on air ride, always align your car to your right height and don't touch it. Up front, we were running about negative three degrees. Uh, driver's side and then negative 2.8. The passenger caster is good. My Look at my toe, guys. My toe is horrible. Almost two, positive two degrees on the driver's side and as well as the passenger side. And then, that's pretty cool though. My drive height is about negative six degrees camber and my toe is right where it should be. And then after the alignments, Camber is still the same. Toe is almost zeroed out, which is awesome. And we adjusted a little bit more of the rear too, exactly where it should be. So some concerns about the rack and pinion. It's not leaking, it's all pressurized, everything's good. But I guess when Brian and I reinstalled the um, spline to the steering rack, we were off about two or three teeth splines, the guy said, so that causes excessive toe adjustment as in the driver's side's okay but with the passenger side we had to pull out i think like six or seven resolutions so there's like minimal thread left but there's still enough to keep the tie rod out of tie rod stable um they recommend that we either re-stab the steering column to the rack and pinion and then realign after that which honestly i'm probably going to do just to be safe Honestly, I might just take it back to the shop. They gave me a quote, wasn't too bad. It was like 250 bucks just for labor to take the rack back out and put the steering column into the rack and pinion, I guess near perfect and then realign it. So definitely going to be doing that in the very near future. So that everybody is going to conclude this vlog. I hope you learned a little bit about installing outer tie rods. Very, very simple. And again, if you're gonna be working on your rack and pinion by yourself, try to make sure you get your splines lined up as close as you possibly can. A lot of Prelude content coming your way. I cannot wait. Now I really want to get this motor and trans done as soon as possible. And the holidays are around the corner. More hours, a surplus of overtime, and more money. And also me getting taxed a bunch. But guys, again, thank you so much for continuous love and support. If you're new to the channel and want to hit the subscribe button, that would be awesome. And remember, aim high, drive low. We'll catch you next video. Take care.